Oh, hey, VC. Uh, decided to drop in, huh? Just so happens I'm shooting a video. Welcome aboard. Uh, this is Brian, uh, a.k.a. Cosmic Vinyl. Um, gonna do a little uh, Vinyl Finds video for you. I've been kind of binging out on getting a lot of records lately. Um, some not so, you know, some are the run-of-the-mill stuff, but some pretty interesting stuff. Um, I'm happy with my haul, so um, just going to dive right in. Um, first of all, what we're listening to today is this little compilation I found while digging around in the bargain area. Um, 20 solid gold hits. Um, I think it was the cover that got me, you know, it's kind of got pretty colorful and it looks like that 60s psychedelic kind of stuff, so what I'm into. and. Uh, this is, I mean, look at there, TV special, $3.50. You can't beat that. Although I don't even think I paid half of that, so I guess you can beat it. Um, but uh, some of the tracks on this are Tommy James and the Shondells, Crystal Blue Persuasion, uh, Vanilla Fudge, You Keep Me Hanging On, The Animals, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, Bee Gees, Cow Sills. Um, yeah, this is... This is a pretty great little record. Um, we'll be listening to that while we look at some of these records. All right. Um, first off here is a band called uh, The Circle. Um, the Circle is um, kind of one of those 60s groups that um, were part, you know, that around the same time as like the British Invasion. Um, this is their first outing um, called Red Rubber Ball. That was their one of their big hits. They also had, um, uh, what was their other hit? Um, Turn Down Day was their other hit. Both of those are on this record. Um, they um, were discovered and, and managed by uh, Brian Epstein of Beatles fame. Yeah, he discovered them. They were a frat rock band called the Rondells. And... Um, he changed their name to The Circle, but uh, you can credit John Lennon for uh, the spelling, a C-Y, or should I say misspelling, C-Y-R-K-L-E. Um, John, that was John Lennon's idea. Um, they actually were able to do some shows opening up for the Beatles. They uh, did the Dodger Stadium uh, show, which was a huge thing for them. Also on that bill were the Ronettes and um, the Remains. I mean, the Remains, that must have been a great, great show. Um, also, um, seems like they did another gig. Let me think. Um, uh, I can't remember. It seems like they did some other gigs with the Beatles as well. But, um, yeah, the... They had two uh, two singers and or the two guys that were the driving force behind this band are Tom Dawes and Dan Daneman, and um, they both went on after you know post the circle they went on to write jingles for TV commercials. You can credit Tom Dawes for the old uh, plop plop fizz fizz Alka Seltzer jingle, and um, Dan Daneman did the uh, the original Uncola for Seven Up. Just a little trivia there for you. You always get a little bit of trivia here on the Cosmic Vinyl. So, um, the next record is uh, I'm kind of you'll start to see a pattern for me here. I'm in this era of music, so uh, this is the Buckinghams. Um, also part of that uh, Brit jumped on board that British invasion uh, train. Um, just to real quick before I show you the record, I want to direct your attention to this inner sleeve uh, super poster giant size they had like uh, blood sweat and tears the chambers brothers Bob Dylan Moby grape the Beatles the birds I mean I'd love to have those posters and then on the other side I'm always looking at these inner sleeves and I see these albums that gosh I wish I would have been around back then to pick up some of those records when they came out I mean, there's Big Brother, there's the Big Brother and the Holding Company, um, some Spirit, the Faces, uh, 
the zombies, uh, the O and O, or Odyssey and Oracle. I mean, this is, I love looking at those. But anyway, back to the Buckinghams. Um, Buckinghams uh, were, like I said, part of that. They were formed in the mid '60s. They were part of that British invasion. Um, they actually were called the Pulsations, which is kind of a cool garage rock band, but um, probably needed something a little more British, so the Buckinghams is about as British as you can get, so they changed their name to that. Their number one single that's on this record um, is called uh, Kind of a Drag. They also had a, a hit called Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Um, this, I, I kind of like listening to this music. Um, it is a little bit worn here, um, you know, the cover, but the, uh, the, um, the vinyl is in killer shape, and, um, they have a little, little bit of garage leanings, and, um, they're a pop band of their, they're of their time, you know, of that era. Um, I don't know what's going on back here, why they have a big mushroom cloud, but first I thought that was snowstorm, but it's a mushroom cloud interesting choice of cover but yeah the Buckinghams um, this record is pretty interesting um, I actually got this in a little store in Eagle Grove that I sometimes go to Eagle Grove Iowa this was a little compilation that I, I seen it and first of all the thing that got me was the cover I mean look at that cover that's looks like a, a concert poster almost. Um, this is a compilation. Um, this is Joe Niagara's Sock and Soul. Um, apparently, DJ Records was the, the label and they um, slapped a picture in the name of these famous DJs of the day. Um, you know, these DJs back in the day, they were like, you know, um, fast-talking DJs, spinning platters, and, you know, doing, putting together sock hops, and, um, you know, the teenagers would come out, and they'd, you know, spin their records for the teens, and it was good, kind of a cool idea, but, um, this guy is Joe Niagara, and he worked for WIBG in Philadelphia at the time, um, and um, I don't know, there's a couple other records that they released, Gene K and Humble Harv. Um, there's one I can't read, but it's, I can't, uh, something, I think it's just another compilation. But anyway, um, Joe Niagara was one of the DJs that was caught up in the 1959 Paola scandal. Uh, he got fired from that job at, in Philadelphia, but... He later returned to that position after, you know, everything blew over. Um, he also holds the distinction of um, being uh, the in the world's Re Guinness World Record book for um, most consecutive plays of a cover of covers of the song Stardust, which is a 1927 tune that apparently a lot of people have covered because he played 500 in a row of covers of it. So. Yeah, there you go. That's his claim to fame. Um, but this has got some cool tunes on it. It's got uh, Summer in the City by The Love and Spoonful. Pushing Too Hard. Yeah, you're pushing too hard. By The Seeds. Uh, Psychotic Reaction by The Count Five. I mean, just for those four songs alone, I would have bought this. So, yeah, this is uh, kind of a little cool find. <clears throat> Never seen it before, so I grabbed it. I'm just gonna keep moving right along here. At the, uh, like I, I mentioned, the Love and Spoonful on that um, compilation. This is the Love and Spoonful uh, Do You Believe in Magic record. Um, the, my first um, went, getting wind of the Love and Spoonful was when my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Harbaugh, he, he always told us how he loved the Love and Spoonful and he'd always go around singing songs like Do You Believe in Magic or did you ever have to make up your mind or summer in the city? I mean, he, he was he was a great great teacher. I still run into him now and then. But yeah, he was a huge fan of this group. Um, this is um, one of the members of the ranks of Love and Spoonful was John Sebastian. Um, John Sebastian went on to uh, play Woodstock. 
Um, he was he had a big part in that concert, um, and he also uh, he penned the theme song for the sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter, which back in the '70s was a huge sitcom with John Travolta as Vinnie Barbarino, and uh, yeah, it was a great show. Um, the song was called Welcome Back. It was a big hit for John, so yeah. Um, the Love and Spoonful were actually the band that, when they were putting together the, the show The Monkees, um, they were going to build that show around, around this band. Um, ended up, they got tangled up in some, uh, co you know, some copyright stuff for song stuff and legalisms and all that, and weren't able to, uh, they had to abandon the idea, of course, um, the rest is history with, you know, putting Mickey Dolenz, Michael Nesmith, Peter Tork, and Davy Jones uh, together as the monkeys. So, yeah, um, it just could have been a whole new deal. These guys could have been the monkeys. You never know, right? But anyway, um, love and spoonful. Um, oh, I wanted to show you this, too. I just love, I, they're on the Kama Sutra label, and I, I just love this label, too. It's just, it's kind of cool. Um, I'll just give you a little gander at that in case you've never seen that. Just kind of a cool, uh, cool label. <clears throat> I dig it. I gotta have a drink here. Cheers to the VC. Sipping a little, uh, <clears throat> Diet Dr. Pepper out of my Justice League koozie. The league. Um, moving right along, um... This is a, a, a record that I've been, I wasn't like actively looking for, but I knew I'd pick it up if I ever ran into it. Um, this is uh, Chad and Jeremy's uh, taking a stab at a psych record. Um, they also had another uh, psych outing uh, after this one called The Ark. Um, when this record was released, it was a commercial failure, but... Um, since that time, you know, it's gathered a cult following through the years, and <clears throat> people still, this is definitely collectible and listenable. Um, I first uh, heard of this record from um, DJ Mellow Yellow and the Psych Professor um, of their channel. Um, those two guys are great. If you haven't checked out their channel, A Psychedelic Experience, you definitely got to get there. Um, they actually have their own radio sta radio show. I don't know if it's like for college radio or what, but I've I've actually w went online and listened to some of their broadcasts. They at one time used this as their um, I don't know, like a thumbnail or whatever. But they have superimposed their faces on Chad and Jeremy's bodies. It's hilarious. Um, if you go back and watch some of their videos, you can catch a a glimpse of it. But yeah, um, is. Is this something that I that I would spin every day? Probably not, but you know I'll keep it in my collection. It's a, uh, it's kind of a little bit too like medieval times for me. Um, there's one song on side two um, that's uh, like a carnival type song and uh, with a bunch of sound effects. I think I heard um, uh, like somebody playing ping pong. I heard a toilet flush. Uh, I heard uh, sirens, and I may have even heard somebody um, taking a tug off of a water bong. At least it was kind of a bubbly sound. It could have been a water bong. I mean, you can only hope, I guess. Um, anyway, that's of Cabbage and Kings, Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde. Um, it's funny because those guys actually were in an episode of the 1967 The Batman Show, the series. Um, they were, um, the villain was the Catwoman. She was trying to steal Chad and Jeremy's voices. And that was the caper. And uh, Batman and Robin had to foil the, the scheme of the wily Catwoman. So, yeah, don't, they didn't want to lose, you know, you want to lose Chad and Jeremy. So, one of them was even on the dating game. Um, and um, I believe he won um, his date. So, yeah. You always get a little bit of some little trivia with the, the cosmic final. So, um, this are some uh, albums that I picked up, um, and this you know you see these these are a dime a dozen. And I've seen these out every time I go out. I see cop many copies of these. You can get these cheap, but <clears throat> this is Paul Revere and the Raiders. Um, 
this this is a these are great records. Um, they, the reason I think you see a lot of them out there is probably because they sold a ton of records. But I picked up on uh, the Spirit of '67. Um, I also picked up Here They Come, Paul Revere and the Raiders, um, and then their greatest hits. Um, I didn't realize that they actually had a guy in the band called Paul, his name was Paul Revere. I didn't even know that. His name was Paul Revere Dick, and in uh, his 20s, he owned a bunch of restaurants, and um, he uh, actually met Mark Lindsay, the other driving force behind Paul Revere and the Raiders. Um, when he went to the bakery that Mark worked in and um, to get some buns and the rest is history and they actually have a song about it uh, they immortalized that moment in a song I can't remember what song it was but anyway um, yeah they can their first hit was Louie Louie um, a lot of people it's debatable the Kingsman you know that that's Louie Louie song is most of the time related to the Kingsman but it's funny because who actually released it first because they both recorded it at the same time in the same studio on April, in April of 1963 so who beat who to the punch on Louie Louie um, here was a little surprise inside the record I also got a 7 inch that was in there I didn't get the a deluxe souvenir color photo book which I would have liked to have had but I got the 7 incher though so I'm pretty happy with that but yeah Paul Revere and the Raiders it's I love those guys kind of a garage rock type stuff um, if you want to see a good video about their whole catalog and um, if you go to the channel 33 rpm vinyl um, oh man I worship that guy's channel he, uh, he he's like my idol right now um, He's got a hell of a collection of records, and I, if you haven't subbed him or checked out his videos, you need to do that because, um, yeah, he's awesome, and he's got a great collection. Um, anyway, moving right along, I, I found this uh, Billy Preston record. Um, this is Billy Preston organ transplant. I guess uh, obviously the cover grabbed me. This is arranged by Sly Stone. I mean. When you put those two guys together, you gotta come up with something good, right? Um, it's got the uh, Frankenstein movie on there, the original Frankenstein movie with, um, there's uh, the Frankenstein monster. The only thing in color is his skull cap. They're, they're ready to, it's alive, it's alive. There's uh, Dr. Frankenstein and his partner there. They're like contemplating, uh, oh, there's Igor. Yeah, anyway, Billy Preston, getting back to the matter at hand here. Here's a picture of him on the back. These are cover songs. Um, a couple of the covers are I Can't Get No Satisfaction, It's a Hard Day's Night. Uh, Billy Preston went on to work with the Stones and the Beatles. He was a big part of their uh, some of their music, so yeah. Um, and uh, Some of the other uh, songs that, that, that were co-written by uh, Sly Stone on here are good too, like Free Funk. Uh, that's a great tune. Uh, a couple of the cover tunes that I really impressed with on this was In the Midnight Hour and the In Crowd. So yeah, check this out. It, you can get it cheap, I'm sure. It's well worth the whatever few bucks I paid for it. So um, this record here is the Sunshine Company. I, I'd seen this record shown um, around the VC, either this one or they had other records too. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more psych on this one, but this is, you're not going to find any um, fuzzy guitars or feedback or any tasty, crunchy guitar licks on this, uh, on this record, but, um, but this is, has, stands out in its own artistic way as, uh, with its l lyrics and its harmony. The, um, this is a, a very good sound. This is a, they're great musicians, but it's all hippies, beads, and ponchos, and smiles, and this is a, um, a pretty, you know, it's a decent record. There's one song on here called Four in the Morning that's got a little bit of fuzzy guitar, but this is pretty hippy-dippy. Um, but yeah, um, this might be a good one, like if I get home from work after a rough day to bring all, to maybe raise my mood. This is all happy and smiles. 
Um, I think when they marketed this record, it was probably, at the time, it was probably supposed to be anti-psych um, or anti-protest um, or whatever. They probably marketed it as more of an alternative, to a positive alternative to some of the other stuff that was out at the time. So this has this has its place in, in a, well, I won't spin it every day, but I'll keep it around. I might look at some of their other stuff and see what I can dig up but yeah that's uh, a pickup that I got now this is psych um, this is something that I got off of uh, I got off of eBay now check out that inner sleeve there that's that's a uh, kind of trippy I mean look at the colors there and that's your uh, MGM uh, original sleeve there there's front and back that's a uh, that's pretty sweet um, yeah, this is the ultimate spinach. Um, I'll unfold this for you so you can get a good look at it. But there they are. There's the band right there. Their minds drenched in LSD and with a big uh, cloud of ultimate spinach growing from their altered minds. Um, yeah, this is a, a psych record. Um, the inner sleeve there, the gatefold. There's some trippy ramblings of the band members in there that's pretty interesting read. Um, I was a little disappointed when I got this because I think when I ordered this, I thought I was getting um, the one that had mine flowers on it. And I love that mine mangle or whatever. Um, that song is awesome. I thought that was on here, but I was mistaken. That's on the Behold and See record, which is their second album. But this concept record is, I guess it's supposed to be anti-war. Um, the driving force behind the ultimate spinach is a fella named Ian Bruce Douglas. He was the main songwriter and um, I think he did a lot of the instruments too. So they did have a female vocalist named Barbara Hudson. She's, uh, her standout track on this and my favorite track on the record is called The Ballad of the Hip Death Goddess. And some of the other songs, there's like some spoken word over some trippy instrumentals on there, like Ego Trip. Oh, it kind of reminded me of the Timothy Leary records. Um, but yeah, um, Your Head is Reeling, The Funny Freak Parade. I mean, yeah, this is a, this is definitely psychedelic, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll keep this one around. It'd be a good one to get smog to and listen to at least that's what I assume or I heard I don't know um, my last record was probably the biggest surprise of all the haul um, and I've been kind of dra I was kind of dragging my feet about picking this up but this is um this is the birds fourth record um, this is called uh, younger than yesterday and I'm really happy with this I think the reason I drug my feet a little bit was because you know, I thought after their third album, they started going towards a more country sound, which, you know, I, I kind of just wasn't into that whole thing. But, the, and this does have some of that, but this is definitely, I kind of put this on the same, not on the same level, but the same uh, area as, say, the Beatles Revolver, kind of the a lot of the same uh, experimental stuff um, with the reverse uh, tape recordings and... Um, electronic oscillator and um you know they tried some things with this and um there's definitely some psych stuff in this record to be gleaned from it and there's a song on here about an alien an extraterrestrial or the or the existence of extraterrestrial life it's called cta 102 and um there's so you want to be a rock and roll star is the opening track that one kind of grabs you right out of the gate thoughts and words and mind gardens i mean this does have some psychedelic leanings for sure um yeah i dig this record quite a bit it was a pleasant surprise um the bass player i can't remember his first name but his last name is hillman and um he kind of was kind of coming into his own as a contributing songwriter in this group um, he wrote a couple of the tracks, Thoughts and Words, and I think he also wrote the title, or the opening track, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star. This is produced by Gary Usher, and he, um, 
he's co-wrote a lot of songs. Um, he had wrote a lot of songs that were big hits. He worked with Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Um, uh, he worked with a lot of... What else? I, mean, I think I might have wrote it down somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I wrote it down somewhere. But anyway, yeah. This is... Uh, just a, I definitely recommend this record if you don't have it. Um, anyway, that's the video, folks. Um, one more cheers and I'm out of here. I got a lot of a lot of records. I'll be making some more videos and putting them out fairly soon here. So, uh, thanks for hanging in there and um, have a great night. Have a great day. And this is uh, Cosmic Vinyl. Brian, peace out.